bouillabaisse is a famous dish from the French city of Marseille. Traditional recipes call for an array of Mediterranean seafood along with other ingredients, including fennel, orange, and saffron. But there are lots of variations, and a popular one, touted by Julia Child herself, involves swapping chicken for the seafood to make bouillabaisse du poulet, or chicken bouillabaisse. And that's what Dan's going to show us how to make today. So it's really nice to switch in the chicken for the fish because it's so much easier to get, it's a lot less expensive, but it does present its own challenges. So we're going to address some of those today and make one of the best braises on the planet. Really. I'm in. So we're going to start with a whole chicken. What's nice about working with a whole chicken is you get a mix of different parts, and because they're all from the same bird, they cook at about the same rate because they're the same size. Right. You don't have massive breasts from one chicken and smaller legs from another. I'm going to start by making a nice separation here between the drumstick and the breast. What a lot of people tend to do is they cut very close to the breast here and then the skin peels up and you have breast that's unprotected. So what I like to do is cut closer to over here. So I'll pull it back and I'll make my cut this way. So I leave a little extra, the breast is going to be nice and covered. So what I'm going to do is just cut through here and then you can see this nice line of fat right here. Mm -hmm. So that kind of shows you where you should be cutting. So you're going to go right along there. And you're going to start going through the ribs, which are really small bones, so they're very easy to cut through. And then when you get to about here, I like to just do a little break like this, open it up, and then you can go right in with your knife the rest of the way. Now, Dan is very good with a knife, but if you're doing this for the first time and you want something that's a little easier to work with, try using a pair of scissors. Okay, and then once that's back, very easy to get that last little bit. So now you've also got a nice view of what's going on inside here, right? So I like to just hold down the backbone with my knife here, you can pop that and see that come out. So I like to peel back and that oyster comes out nice and easily that way. So that's the oyster right there. Mm, that tender piece of dark meat. It's so good, it's right? It's kind of like the number one piece of meat on the chicken. Absolutely. So I'm just going to finish up our legs while we're here. And there's another line of fat here. The chicken's just made for breaking down, right? <laughs> it's got all these nice lines for you. So you want to go right about there, and that's going to be a nice separation between the bone. Now we're just going to deal with our breast. So we're going to go through this bone right here. So I like to make a cut and then kind of center it on the knife right there and then just give it a good whack. And you can hear it start to break. And then we're slicing the rest of the way through, right through that skin. And then the final thing is these wings are delicious, but they're gonna cook a little funny in here, so we're gonna take them off for this. And that's just going in with your knife. Finally, these breasts are really large compared to these guys, so we're gonna cut them in half crosswise. And you're doing two different things here. You're sawing through the meat, and then you gotta crunch through that bone. All right, there are nice well pieces. Well done. Thank you. So now we're gonna heat two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil here in this Dutch oven until it just starts smoking. In the meantime, I'm just gonna pat these guys dry before we season. Nice dusting of salt and pepper. We're just starting to smoke on our oil. Mm -hmm. We're going in skin side down. We're gonna render a lot of fat from that. And we're gonna do a lot of things throughout this recipe to make sure that skin is really good. So we're gonna sear these for about eight to 10 minutes. We're gonna get the skin nice and rendered and a little bit brown, and we're gonna get some good fond on the bottom of the pot. All right, this is looking great. So this has been about eight minutes, and we browned both sides. So we're gonna turn off the heat, and then I'm just gonna get this stuff out of here. That's gorgeous browning on the chicken. Beautiful, right? And even more gorgeous is the fond in the bottom of the pan, because fond is flavor. So they look really good, but you can't eat these yet. No, they're a little raw on the inside, <laughs> It's a huh? little bit raw, yeah. So this is all about getting flavor and getting the skin ready for the next phase. So we've got some really interesting vegetables going in here. We're gonna start with fennel. So what I'm gonna do is simply cut down the middle like this, and then it's got a core in the middle here. So I like to just make two cuts, one on this side, one on this side, and we'll just pop that right out. It's a lot like cutting like a cabbage core out. And then we're just gonna go up and down, nice and thin. So I'm just gonna put this back on the heat here and we're gonna add our beautiful fennel bulb. Also adding in one thinly sliced leek. So we're gonna cook this for about four minutes. As you can see, some of that fond is already coming off the bottom. All right, these look nice. A little mm. bit of browning, but they've definitely softened up a lot. Okay, so we're gonna go in with the rest of our aromatics. We've got four cloves of garlic that we minced up. Next up, we have a quarter teaspoon of saffron. The most expensive spice in the world. It's pretty expensive stuff. So <laughs> a quarter teaspoon going in here. We've also got a quarter teaspoon of cayenne for some nice heat, and then a tablespoon of tomato paste. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. It's gonna add some flavor. It's also gonna help thicken it up a bit, but really what's gonna help thicken it is a tablespoon of all-purpose flour. So I'm gonna stir this in for about 30 seconds. All right, that smells and looks great. Now we're gonna build the base of our braise. So we have a 14 and a half ounce can of diced tomatoes that we drained of the liquid, a half cup of dry white wine, three cups of chicken broth, 
So we have this strip of orange zest. Now mm. normally you'd see this in like an old fashioned or a kind of cocktail that you <laughs> like, but here it adds some really nice orange aroma to the stew. Next we have a quarter cup of pastis, which is a really interesting ingredient. It's kind of licorice-y and it works really well with the fennel. And finally, three quarters of a pound of Yukon gold potatoes that we cut into three quarter inch pieces. So we just need to bring this up to a simmer. I'll reduce the heat to medium low. We'll go for about 10 minutes to par cook those potatoes. All right. So the potatoes have cooked for about 10 minutes at this point. They're definitely not done, but we've given them a jump start. We're also gonna give a jump start to the dark meat. So what we're gonna do is pop in our drumsticks and thighs. We want the skin to remain above the surface of the liquid. So we're gonna use those potatoes underneath as kind of a little structural support. We're just gonna rest the dark meat right on top of them. So we're gonna give the dark meat a head start of about five minutes of simmering, and then we'll be ready to add our white meat. Now it is time for our white meat to go in. Just trying to nestle on top of the potatoes as much as possible. So we're gonna let this sit for a second and turn our attention to the croutons. So we're gonna start with two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Now I have almost all of a baguette cut up here, but I saved about three inches from the end. We're gonna put that to use in a second. And then I'm gonna season with salt and pepper. I have a 375 degree oven preheated. So this is gonna go on the lower rack. It's gonna get nice and toasted on the bottom. And the chicken is gonna go on the middle rack. We're gonna cook this uncovered because we want that skin to stay nice and dry. And that's gonna take 10 to 20 minutes. So while our braise is cooking away in the oven, hands-free, we're gonna work on the final component of the dish, which is a rui. Mm, I love rui. What's really great about rui, especially for cooking at home, is it's much more foolproof than a regular mayonnaise. So I've got three tablespoons of water and another quarter teaspoon of saffron. And I actually bloom this in the microwave. So 10 to 20 seconds, get it nice and steaming, and it sits for about five minutes. So I'm gonna stir in four teaspoons of lemon juice, I saved about three inches of that baguette that we used for the croutons, and I took the crust off because that's not gonna soften very easily, and I just ripped the rest of it into roughly one inch pieces. So you want about a cup of these. And so that's gonna go into our mixture here. We're gonna let this sit for five minutes, and that bread's gonna soak up the liquid, and we can build our rui. So usually we tell you to bloom your spices in oil, but saffron is one of the few spices that's both water and oil soluble. The aroma of saffron is created by two compounds naturally present in the flour. One of the compounds, picrocrocin, is soluble in water, and the other, safranal, is soluble in oil. Let's make some rui. So our right. bread has soaked for about five minutes, and you can see that it's nice and soft. So I'm gonna use my whisk and kind of mash it up. We want this to be as smooth as possible. Okay, that looks great. So we're gonna add a few more ingredients. One is not that traditional, actually. We're gonna use some Dijon mustard, and this is two teaspoons. Next, we've got one egg yolk, and then we've got a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper and two cloves of minced garlic. So now I'm gonna mix this all together so we have a nice base to get our oil into. Next, I'm gonna make a nice little nest for our rui for whisking everything in. You want it to be a little bit smaller than the base of the bowl so it actually sits in there. We're gonna start with a half a cup of vegetable oil. So I just start whisking here and what you wanna do is have a nice steady stream. So I just look at right where it's coming out, that little tip right there, and I try and keep that stream thin but constant. Right, because if you add too much oil all at once, it won't make an emulsion. Okay, and that is all of our vegetable oil. So next I have a half cup of extra virgin olive oil. And you might think it's strange that we used even some vegetable oil. We found when you use all extra virgin olive oil and it's really good stuff, it has that peppery bite, it can be a little overpowering. So it's really important to look at how you're whisking. The side to side motion here is really good. We found that we got the best emulsions this way. And that is the last of the olive oil. That is a gorgeous rui, by the way. Beautiful, right? All right, so we're gonna set this aside. Our chicken is almost done. We can put everything together and dig in. Great. All right, it's been 15 minutes. It smells really good. Ooh, you can really smell the fennel. We're gonna take it over here and temp it. Would you mind grabbing those croutons for me and then also turning the oven to broil? You bet. Right, those croutons look great. We're looking for lower temperatures than we normally are because we're not done cooking the chicken at this point. So we're looking for 145 in the white meat and that looks great and 160 in the dark. So now we're gonna go back under that broiler and we're gonna go for five to 10 minutes. It's gonna get super crispy on top and finish cooking the chicken through. Perfect, so the broiler brought it right up to 160 and it did this other nice thing, crisped and brown all that skin. It's gorgeous. Doesn't that look beautiful? Okay, so we're gonna get our chicken out, and we're just gonna try and remove a little bit of fat from this. So we want some in there, it has a ton of flavor in it, but too much and it can be a little bit greasy. Now we're gonna add in a tablespoon of minced tarragon. As it oh. kinda hits the heat, you can really smell it, right? Yeah. You ready to eat? I am. So I'm gonna start with our nice brothy vegetables. 
So pretty. Maybe a little white and dark? A little bit of both. It's like I know you after all these years. <laughs> I'm going to take some of our Rui, we just float those right in, and then finally we're going to do a little drizzle, about a tablespoon or so, all over there. This looks beautiful. Um, beautiful enough to eat. Yes. Oh, that's good. You get the fennel, a little bit of saffron. The skin is nice and crispy, which is really special in a braise. You know what I like about it is it is reminiscent of the traditional bouillabaisse with seafood, but it's a little bit heartier thanks to the chicken. That's right. And we haven't even talked about the Rui yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm it, just enjoying the Rui. It is the star. It is so good. <laughs> Man, this is delicious. Thank you. You're welcome. So to make bouillabaisse de poulet, start by browning the chicken in a Dutch oven. Add the classic flavors of fennel, orange, saffron, and pastis, and braise the chicken with the skin sitting above the surface of the liquid. Serve with an authentic Rui and some croutons, and you've got it. From our test kitchen to your kitchen, a wonderful new recipe for chicken bouillabaisse. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.